Dr. Turgeon, one of the faculty mentors on this project, along with Dr. Donnelly. Um, so our students are members of the Sociology Club, which put on a gender monopoly event last semester. And the students decided to collect data around it. And so the research they're presenting is on that. And so I'm pleased to introduce Caitlin Stowen and Faith Meyer. She'll tell you more about the project. All right, good morning, everybody. Like Dr. Curtis said, my name is Caitlin. And I'm Faith. And we're presenting on our research project entitled Ladies Do Not Pass Go, Changing Cultural Gender Beliefs to a Gender Monopoly Simulation. So you may be... So you may be wondering what that entails, but first I want to get started with a couple of questions. So I need you guys to participate by raising your hands when I ask these questions. If, it, if you don't think what I'm going to ask you is true, don't raise your hand. First question, do you think that men and women get paid the same across all occupations regardless of age? Alright, so women statistically do get paid 20% less than men. Great, and one final question. Do you think that men and women should share the housework if they both hold traditional or full-time jobs? Okay. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, yeah, they should. Um, research shows that women enter a second shift when they get home from work, which um, they tell that they're expected to do household labor after their full-time or traditional job. So um, some of the past literature on gender inequality in the workplace begins with gender roles. So the preference of gender roles, such as women as homemakers, and men as breadwinners have had an impact on um, gender beliefs. So some of these roles depict women as naturally more nurturing, like a homemaker, or um, men more naturally inclined in the workplace to manage, so the breadwinner. And the, the adherence to these gender roles have had economic inequality among men and women. Um, the workplace has seemingly become more equal over time, but women still face many struggles, such as unequal access to higher paying jobs, lower wages, and the mother. So the perceived instinctive qualities of women compared to men are used to explain variance across um, occupational labor. Um, so due to these instinctive qualities people believe women possess, or due to these instinctive qualities people believe women possess, women have faced pervasive stereotypes such as caring mother or uh, office housekeeper. And as previously mentioned, one traditional gender role defines women as homemakers. This can have implications for women. A woman's job as a homemaker includes the expectations of you know, cleaning, child care, or cooking. So um, as the workforce changed um, and women left homes to enter paid labor, they were still expected to care for the house and family. So this expectation led to what sociologist um, Arlie Hochstu um, have termed the second shift. So the second shift refers to the responsibilities of child and housework more disproportionately to women in addition to their paid labor. So to further illustrate the second shift, we'll use the following scenario. Mom and dad both work eight hours and they come home roughly around the same time. Mom is expected to do the housework, get the children ready, and cook dinner, while traditionally dad is expected to do none of these things. <laughs> so um, Stacy Smith is the game of monopoly with modifications to highlight gender inequality. She knows that gender economic inequality is more complex than, and it involves more than just gender categories, which is why marriage and children are also included in the game. So now we'll go over the game rules real quick. Each participant received an envelope randomly containing cards labeled either male or female. If the player received a female card, it read collect 20% less when passing go or earning other income and earn 10 and pay 10% more for purchases. Because research shows that women make about 79% of men's income, they only collected 80% of the $200 when passing go. So women also pay 10% uh, more for purchases to highlight the gender tax. Um, so Smith notes that not only do women pay more for the same services such as haircuts, um, like such as um, more than men for same services such as haircuts, but also 7% more for gender products like personal care items or clothes. So another thing indicated the number of children the player had. For at least for those with at least one child, they were required to pay $10 per child when passing go. And this was to show the financial costs of half children. And there was a final card that read either married or unmarried. And those who were married received an extra $100 to indicate the dual, um, dual earner household. And so random life events were announced throughout the game such as getting divorced or your children broke an arm when calling up a tree, so now you have to pay that off the bills. Um, another life event that happened was women having to leave their job due to sexual harassment because of gender conflict in the workplace. So um, as for our research question, we wanted to examine how participating in a gender stratified monopoly situation might affect the gender beliefs of students. Um, so prior to beginning the game, participants um, completed a survey which we will call the pretest. This survey included demographic information as well as a few statements regarding gender beliefs. Students were in, asked to indicate to what degree they either agreed or disagreed with each statement. 
So once the gameplay ended, students were asked to complete a second survey, which we will call the post test. And this post test used mixed methods as it combined open-ended questions with another agree or disagree scale. Our sample was a convenient sample that consisted of roughly 25 students, but actually 15 students were able to take the pre-test and the post-test. Um, although small, our sample was virtually representative to the student population at JSU. So um, we thought it might be interesting to take a look at the difference in scores between some of our different groups. So the average scores of the pre-test and post-test for um, the gender category. Um, interestingly though, the lowest score on the pretest came from female, right here, and um, the group that showed the largest change in average from pretest to post-test was females. Of our male respondents, the highest score was a 27, which was the lowest of all the other groups' high, highest post-test scores. So um, to compare the data of the pretest and the post-test, we use a very simple t-test. This is a means comparison test that is meant to show the differences in the means between the pretest and the post-test. This test was used because we were testing the same group of students twice, once before the simulation and once after. So higher scores meant lower adherence to traditional gender roles, and the average score on the pretest was 19. The lowest score recorded was 14, while the highest was 23. We have that. Oh, right here. Um, The, um, the average on the post-test was a 26, and the lowest score on the test was a 21, while the highest was a 30, and 30 was the highest possible option. Um, so we ran our test with a 95% confidence level, so for our, uh, our findings to be statistically significant, our p-value needed to be less than 0 0.05, and our p-value was 0, so our findings were actually um, significant. Um, show the um, pre-index and the average or the scores for each thing. So as we said, each score, the higher the score, the better. So that's for the pre-test. And this is for the post-test. And then we have a graph that shows the jump. As you can see, that's pretty significant. The pre-test average right there and the post-test average right here. So overall, there was about um, a seven change or seven point change. And this meant that gender beliefs changed to match the current reality of gender inequality. Through qualitative open-ended responses, we found that many students felt that the game reinforced their beliefs about gender inequality. So this was apparent in answers like, women have it harder than men, and the simulation confirmed that gender inequality is a serious issue that affects other aspects of life. Others specifically mentioned certain struggles faced by women. This is illustrated by one student's response to the question, what did you learn about gender inequality through this simulation? And they replied, gender inequality is prevalent in many aspects of life, from the gender facts to sexual harassment. Another respondent said, gender inequality is shown to pay in purchases, noting that they were aware of the pay gap, but not the differences in purchases before participating. And we also have some other um, inequality responses up here. So while our respondents mainly focused on gender beliefs, Smith also heavily um, reflected on class differences. So 56% of hers um, directly talked about class inequality, specifically mentioning um, but the differences between wealth, income, and privileges amongst the different social classes. 57% directly mentioned the wage gap, gender tax, and complications of children for women compared to men. So, some limitations of our research included the uh, sample, which was a convenient sample. And a convenient sample has a higher level of sampling error, is vulnerable to selection bias, <coughs> and has a possibility of over or under representation. Like we mentioned earlier, our sample was racially significant, or racially equal to that of the um, JSU student population. So um, the responses also supported the idea that marriage is a solution for poverty, and this is just not the case. America doesn't have a stable structure for single persons, including <coughs> single persons with children, and politicians push for marriage to be fixed by advocating for marriage workshops, which doesn't work. So um, the results from this preliminary research show that playing gender strike on monopoly can indeed have an effect on student beliefs. So in the future, to further test this idea, we would like to try um, or repeat the simulation with a larger sample size. However, we would also like to modify the game. First, we want to better illustrate the distinctions between the um, benefits of marriage and being single. And secondly, we would like to include different family types of social application across all levels. That's our presentation. Thank you. Yeah. I found this very interesting because I work in 
the Center for Economic Development, and one thing that the state is focused on is workforce. And um, through some of our research, I believe that women generally are the ones who give up their education and careers to hold um, caregivers for the children or even elder care for their husband's family. And um, so just kind of, it's not kind of a question, but in further research, it would be interesting to find out like how many women have done that and if employers would offer elder care or child care um, kind of benefits, how many more educated people we would have in our, in our workplace. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think we can um, try and do that in our next presentation, which is actually a couple weeks anyway. So, cool. thank you. Thank you.